Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about the five things that you should never do when you get into a car wreck. Now getting into a car wreck is often a traumatic experience. So you have to be prepared ahead of time. Just don't wait till it happens and then things start going that are out of control. Learn to control it yourself. And the first thing not to do is don't let the tow truck drivers that come, let them take your car where they want to take it. You want to have a place that you want that car towed to, to get fixed. If you don't know a good body shop, hey, tow it to your house. By law, they have to be able to tow it to your house. Then, later, you can have it towed to shops to get fixed. But really, you want to know a good body shop in the first place, put it on your phone, then you're prepared. Because almost all those tow truck drivers are what's called bird doggers. If they tow your car to a shop they're affiliated with, they get a kickback on the money that's spent on repairing the car. You want to have it taken to an honest repair shop that you know is going to do good work that isn't doing kickbacks with people. Now the next thing not to do is don't say it was your fault for the accident. Don't take responsibility for anything. You let the facts speak for themselves. And in that respect, see if you can get the police to come to the accident. Because nothing beats a good police report. In case somebody tries to say it was your fault when it wasn't your fault, the police report is what they always take in court as the best evidence. As an example, years ago I had a customer in their Toyota. They were driving south on a green light. It had just turned green. Going east-west was a guy who T-boned him, smashed right into him. He ran a red light and smashed into him. But the guy who smashed into my customer, hey, they weren't waiting around. What they did was, they said, oh, we gotta be somewhere. We're not waiting for the police to come. And they took off. Before they did, my customer said, she saw him giving money to these two guys at a bus stop who were witnesses and said that, oh, she ran the red light, not him. Now, if the police would've shown up, there's no way that those people were gonna lie in front of a policeman and say, oh, we saw her run the red light. Somebody's sitting at a bus stop. Yeah, they're watching the light right in the traffic to see who goes where. They have no idea what's going on. The guy just bribed them and her company ended up paying the other guy, even though the other guy T-boned her. Now she wanted to fight it, but her insurance company said, if you fight it, we'll drop your insurance coverage because they don't want to get involved in a case court. Well, that's not fair, you know? So if you can get the police to come to the scene of an accident, that's much better than having some hearsay about what actually happened or somebody just bribing witnesses to give it luck they didn't do it. Now the next thing not to do is don't forget to take pictures. Take picture of the car the other person was driving of the damaged area of your car. Take pictures of the surrounding area. If you got a video, make a video of it. Because I had a customer once who was rear-ended by somebody and they claimed that my customer backed up into them. <laughs> well, they took pictures of it and they proved from all the surrounding areas that they were just driving on the road and this person rear-ended them. They didn't back up in the middle of the road and run into them. Remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. Take pictures of what happened in the accident. And even though it's a traumatic situation, make sure you get the other person's information. Make sure their driver's license, the name, the address matches their insurance information. I've had more people get hit by people who didn't have insurance and they'd say something like, oh, don't worry, we'll pay for it. You don't go for that baloney. If the person does not have proof of insurance there, call the police. And if they drive away, take a picture of their license plate of them and file a hit and run report because there's so many people out there trying to pull sleazy things in an accident, you want to make sure you cover all your bases. And in that respect, even if you don't have full coverage, make sure you have uninsured motorist coverage like I do. Because one time, I got hit by somebody and they decided they were going to take off. Well, took a picture of their license plate in their car, filed the hit and run report, and my insurance paid for it. And then, strangely enough, years later, I got a refund for my deductible because they caught the person, took them to court, and made them pay for the whole thing. So you have to make sure you keep your wits about yourself if you do get in an accident. That's why you got to do a lot of this planning ahead of thinking, okay, if this happens, what am I going to do? Have it all set up. And if you're the type of person that you're worried you're going to forget, put it on your phone as a note or put a little notebook in your glove box and write down steps to do if I get in an accident. Now the last thing not to do if you get in an accident, especially if it's a relatively serious accident, 
is don't say, oh, I'm okay, I don't need to see a doctor. Get yourself checked out, especially if it was a big wreck where the airbag deployed or you hit the steering column even though you have the seat belt on realize if you got the seat belt on you're still going to get all kinds of bruises from the seat belt you can get internal injuries that you think aren't any big deal that can kill you sadly i've had more than one of my customers die that way they get in a wreck a pretty big one and they'd say oh i'm okay i can walk around and then later they die of either an embolism from something finally exploding and finishing them off or they have internal bleeding Eating, and they end up dying from that. If you do get in a big accident, make sure you go to the hospital and get checked out. You don't want to have something serious happen to you because it can be a very traumatic experience. I mean, I once did this shoot for the Houston Police Department where they tell you to wear your seatbelt and you just ride on this little sled and you're only going like four miles an hour. At the end of the four miles an hour, the sled just stops. That seatbelt, it hurt my ribs and a month later I could still feel them and that was in a little sled going four miles an hour with a seat belt on. Being an ex-hockey player I thought hey smashing into people on time on the ice it's nothing on the seat belt machine right but guess again you're on the ice you get hit you slide around and unless you ram totally into the boards the energy is going to be dissipated sliding your body around on the ice when you're sitting in a seat with a seat belt on even four miles an hour of a dead stop Man, it hurt my ribs for months. So if you get in a larger wreck, make sure you go to the hospital. Oh, I feel okay. You never know when you go on that fast. If you're old like me, hey, don't forget to have your Medicare card. Cause if you don't have your Medicare card, you might have a hassle in the hospital. They'll know who you are and you'll have the insurance covering at least. And now you know what to do or what not to do if you get in a car accident because really it's bad enough getting in a car accident you don't want to have a whole bunch more hassles to follow it down the line if you don't do the right things after it happens so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell